Hi, this is Josh here with Cody Co. Fruit Farm and Nursery. And today we're, um, we're looking at um, varieties of cassava that we grow on the farm. And uh, we're going to do a taste test of all these. Um, but first I wanted to start outside showing some of the different characteristics of these. Uh, so this is seven varieties of cassava that we grew on the farm this year. And we feel that of all the staple starchy foods uh, that can be grown in Central Florida and probably the you know the whole state of Florida, cassava is probably the most durable, reliable producer of uh, starch um, that we can have compared to, I mean, there's also yams, sweet potato, and taro, which are all great, but cassava probably has a bit of an edge on the others in terms of being just very, very reliable in poor soils and um, all the conditions that happen in Florida. It's only real weakness as a crop in our areas that it can blow over under high winds. Uh, but we have seven varieties here and uh, really you can see that it's a very diverse crop in the color of the different roots, the size to some degree, um, and all, all different types of things. And that diversity is also reflected in how the plants perform. Now, um, unfortunately, some of these are not good representatives of their potential. For instance, this one is very small, and that's not because this is a poor producer. I had plants of this that would have had much larger roots, but they're out in an area that got really dry and the plants look real bad. And sometimes under dry conditions, they don't taste as good. So for our taste test, I wanted to pull one that was grown in the same conditions as these other ones so it would get a fair shake. So it's possible the plant that's out in the front, you know, would have roots more like this on this variety and this variety. Um, and these all were not planted at the same date. So there's a variation here that the size, don't, don't go away from this video thinking the size of these is directly correlated to how well each one produces. I could comment a little bit on how they each produce, but um, the picture is a little more uh, broad than that. So we'll start going through these. Uh, this one is called Togo. This has been our old standby because it tastes, it's always tasted really good for us. It never gets bitter. It can produce very early and it's also for us been very productive. It's from West Africa. That's been our favorite over the years, um, but we'll see how it holds up today to the taste test because we've never tasted all these up against each other like this. This is Cuban white. Um, this is one I used to grow more that we slowly kind of phased out and moved into Togo. Not necessarily for any great reason other than that this one sometimes will take a longer season to produce um, a good sized root. And I have a vague memory of digging this up in the middle of the winter and the roots had turned a little bit bitter. But again, today we'll see how they do. This is CMC 40. Um, this is a fantastic uh, Brazilian variety that was released by a breeding program in Brazil. The really standout thing about this variety is that it was bred for drought tolerance and it's very early in ultra, ultra productive. This is very typical and there'll be eight or 10 of these size on every plant. They really like always produce high, uh, large roots under, um, under even poor conditions. And this one, we've had really good tasting experiences with it. And then recently we had one that was a little less promising. So we'll see how that ends up comparing today in the taste test. This one is Shan's Yellow. Now this is an amazing variety. Um, it's from India. And right now they look, it looks white, but when you cook it up, the roots are actually quite, uh, quite yellow inside, probably due to a beta carotene content. As it stands, we have another yellow. The two yellows are our very favorite tasting, but again, the taste test will tell. This one is a new one to us. It's Brazilian. It's called Branca, which means white. And uh, I know very little about this. It seems to have produced okay. I only have one plant, so I don't, I can't really comment a whole lot about it. But if this tastes good, this might, you know, make it on in our future plantings, It'd be something we carry. Now this one is called agroforestry. And unfortunately, this is not actually a, uh, an off type kind of root. They're all kind of small on the plant. And it's called agroforestry because it grows so upright and tall. The plant must be 13 feet tall. It's been in the ground the same, I planted it the same day as this. So this one, maybe not so impressive for production. 
Um, and then the last one here is called Mantega, which is again Brazilian. Comes from the same breeding program, allegedly, as this EMC40. And again, with the Mantega, this small root is, I planted this really late in the season, and it's the only one that's in the same growing conditions as the rest. So the only reason we have this small root is just so we can be sure we're getting a representative of the highest quality. Both of these yellow ones, can actually be quite large and productive, though we have more evaluation work to do on them. So far, they look really good also for production and earliness and other traits that we like. Um, so that's kind of an introduction to all these varieties. We have had other ones in the past that we've lost due to lack of interest or them not being so great. And I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, how these all stack up against each other for flavor. So we're here with our seven cassava varieties to taste. And uh, right off the bat, we can see um, the two yellow varieties definitely cooked yellow. You can see here, this is Mantega, and this is the Cuban white. So uh, Mantega is a little more yellow even than the Shans yellow. So probably um, good beta carotene content, vitamin A, in these ones. Um, and I wanted to point out that even if some of these are bitter, doesn't mean that they're useless varieties. It just means that they may need to be soaked um, like a light fermentation before being made into a flatbread or, um, or flour or something. Um, but we're trying to evaluate today which ones are best to simply boil and eat because for the homeowner, that's probably the most likely way that people are gonna use these. Um, in terms of the bitterness, um, bitterness correlates, the bitter flavor correlates with HCN, hydrocyanic acid, which is what becomes cyanide in your body. And so a super bitter cassava is not something you would want to consume without further processing. Um, but it's something that, as I'm not a biochemist, so don't take my word for it, but as I understand it from hearing from other people from other countries and also from literature, that it's relatively hard to poison yourself with cassava because it will be so unpleasant to eat when it's really toxic because it will be so bitter. And if it's pleasant to eat and sweet and there's no bitterness, then it should be relatively free of the HCN compound. These are all sweet varieties and there might be a, a light amount of bitterness, but none of these would be considered a more uh, a bitter variety. So we're gonna taste them one by one and give general impressions. Um, we, one thing we did want to note is these, these two yellow ones, um, cooked way faster than the rest. They'll dissolve into paste if you cook them as long as we did these other ones. So, all right, we'll go ahead and we'll, I guess we'll start over here with, um, Montega. This one's very good. It tastes um, like a potato to me, like an Irish potato. Yeah, it's a little more fibrous than I remember. Could have just got a, I might have just a bad a bite. Piece. Yeah. But yeah, it's creamier, richer than a, a lot creamy, of than a lot It does of have ones. like a creamy. Yeah. yeah. Delicious. It tastes like a potato. Yeah. Okay. And then no bitterness at all on that one. That I can eat. No bitter for you? Mm -mm. No, no bitter. Hmm. Waterier. I think I like this better. But they taste similar. This one's more bland. This one just has more flavor. Not bitter, just more flavor. They taste... Uh, what's very interesting is these are from different countries, and the plants look different. But they both cook up quickly, and to me, they taste similar. The first one's a lot denser, though. More starchy. Yeah, yeah, okay. starchier. Mantega, maybe starchier. Shan's yellow. Um, I don't know, maybe more flavor. I, more they're flavor. very similar, to be honest. So yeah. if one produced better than the other, I'm not sure that you would notice a difference between cooking these up. Um, 
and it may be that one bite would taste a little different than the other, but they're quite similar. The only difference being the slight variation in Montega is a little more dark yellow than the Shan's yellow. And Shan's yellow is from India. Okay, so this is Branca. I don't know that I've ever tasted this one yet, so this is a new one for me. And this is Brazilian. Tastes good. We have trace of bitterness in there. And maybe not. I'm not getting any bitterness. It's very dense, very chewy. Yeah. It doesn't no, it's, have it's a not, lot. It's not bitter. No. No, it's not bitter. It doesn't have a lot of those hmm. thin fibers. Not the woody core, but sometimes there's just lots of thin fibers. This doesn't have a lot of those. Oh, that's good. That's a good one. I'm pleasantly surprised with that. That, yeah, that will stick around. One. That one tastes good. Okay. Now, Togo. This is our old... Tried and true. Tried and true variety. It's... I would say it's more plain than all three of these. It's very just kind of mild and plain. Yeah. It's... Just, it's nice. It's good to eat. There's no real fiber to, in the flesh. Mm -mm. It's, yeah, I don't know. It's just good. Um, honestly, of these four, I can't say I could pick a favorite because they're all really good and they're slightly different from each other. I would say all four we've had so far are very high quality. Yeah. And actually, the way we have these laid out, the three I'm expecting to be of lower quality are coming next. So we'll see if that holds to be uh, All right. true. Okay. TMC. Now this one cooked. This one's inconsistent. It cooked right. It cooked up a little weird. There's where there's almost like there were spots that were like undercooked, but then it was also getting mushy and falling apart. Yeah. Better. There is some bitter in there. Yeah bitter not mm -hmm. horrible yeah. i need a drink of water <laughs> all right so emily had emily spit that one out she didn't like it because it was bitter um yeah this one sometimes it's bitter sometimes it's not it's it's i may have made a fool of myself on the last video i made because i was saying this one was a very high quality and last year we were having it right alongside of Togo, and it tasted basically the same. It was very good. Yeah. So it just goes to show something we've noticed about cassava. It can taste different under different conditions, and it grows different in different conditions. Like, Togo has been less consistent of a producer for a few gardener friends in southwest Florida than it has been for us, but it's never, ever bitter. Where now with CMC40, we've seen it can taste bitter sometimes and not other times. So, uh, but, you know, something nice about Togo is it's, it never uh, gets bitter. So, you know, that's a strike against CMC40, unfortunately, even though it's a highly productive variety. Um, this one may be better to, you know, grow in bulk to ferment into flowers or flatbreads or whatever. Mm -hmm. Knowing that we have these other four, I mean, I'll definitely keep this around, but having four that are really high eating quality, I'm going to be less motivated to grow out of seeds. Well, and if you're processing cassava, this one's a nice one to have around because it makes such right. big roots that, that right. are you don't easier have... to process than ones that are skinnier. And... Right. Yeah. Okay, so this, this is, is Cuban white. It's been probably five years since I've tasted this, so. I don't know if it's. I mean, I probably have tasted it, right? Let's see how it goes. Um, it's okay. It's just okay. It's okay. It's not as good as these four. It's not bitter. It's not, no, fibrous. But Fiber in my bite. But I think the others have better flavor. Even It's not bitter, yeah. it just has a flavor that I don't like. So, 
This one also is more like a 10, 11, or 12 month season. So the fact that it takes a long time to produce and it's not that amazing tasting kind of makes this one a lower kind of on the list, I would say. And I've got a big piece of fiber from that. I don't know if you got fiber. I no. I picked a piece that didn't look too fibrous. Okay. And then this is agroforestry, which is a ginormous plant that produces little runty roots in like 10 months. So horticulturally, we're not so excited about this, but we'll see how it tastes. That piece feels kind of firm. It's fine. I mean, nothing objectionable about it. Um, tastes like cassava. It tastes, yeah. Trying to see if there's any. Sometimes the bitterness is kind of on the back end after you swallow. Not getting any better from it. I have a vague memory of there was a trace of bitterness in this on a different year, but we've eaten very little of this one. It's fine, I would say. Um, nothing, you know, outstanding about it, but I would say it's it's fine eating quality. Mm -hmm. So I would say CMC40, unfortunately, it's the best producer of all these, but unfortunately has the worst quality. So I think we'll say for now, this one is sometimes not bitter, but sometimes bit. We don't know why, but you know, it could be that we've had some cold weather. Some varieties, it may be they go into like a stress mode from drought or cold and they start to store up more toxins. And so it could be cold that triggered the bitterness in this. And maybe six weeks ago, it would have had no bitterness, but uh, that might not be your first choice as a homeowner. Um, Togo, unless, same. Unless you're Processing, Unless you're processing roots. Them if flour. you're processing them into flour and you're fermenting them, and you may not care. Or cassava because it won't be bitter after you process. I've taken cassava that tastes bitter like this fresh and processed it, and it tastes great. Right. In breads and flour, and made into flour and things like that. Togo, uh, same as always, very consistent, very good, good texture, good taste. Branca was impressive. I like this. We're gonna plant. I think we'll plant more of this this year because and, and keep seeing what this is about because this is a good one. Also a Brazilian variety. And the Shans Yellow and Mantega are both very good. So, I mean, probably this year we'll grow... Since these three are really known for us, these three will be the bulk and then we'll scale up with this. Cuban White, I don't see a great reason to grow a lot of that. Agroforestry, I'm not impressed with the plant very much. The root was fine, and maybe CMC40 will grow for for flower and flatbreads and stuff. Mm. So uh, I would say right now, if, uh, if you were going to order cuttings from us, the three that I would probably say would be your strongest three choices would be Togo, Shans Yellow, and Montega, because my I haven't grown these as much, but my impression is they're relatively early producers. Togo, we know is an early producer. They taste great. And we, uh, we, I know more about the production of these. I don't know as much about the production of this Bronco variety, but based on the root quality, it would be worth trying. The other three are, I think are more take it or leave it. Agree? Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching. And we will be selling cassava cuttings. Um, you can go to our website and order cuttings of these and grow them in your own garden. Thanks for watching.